Mothers are sweet. They bring us joy and they nurture the soul. In that way, they are very much like Tim Tams. Today we celebrate Mother's Day by bringing back a former champion and letting it strut its stuff with three new flavors. It's the all Tim Tam special on. You tried it! You tried Dad. Tim Tams. I'm Nick Novak on the Palace. Chad Hancock. Howdy. Nick Iger. Hey there. Now, um, I know it's Mother's Day, but I'm going to mention a little, little something that uh, my dad used to wear when I was younger. Now, mm-hmm. uh, we've all seen hats and shirts that have weird, inappropriate sayings, right? You, uh, None of us are... Are foreign to wearing a graphic tee from now, now and then. Yeah, yeah, but you when you say inappropriate, you mean like Big Johnson kind of stuff or co-ed yeah, yeah. volleyball or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Famously, my dad. You, there was pictures of us in Disney World, and he was wearing a p- party naked uh, shirts. <laughs> um, but he always used to wear this hat that, for some reason, just said "Who farted." With a question mark. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. It is uh, like a funny. good question, too. Yeah. And I never quite got what the joke was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the joke is that he wants to know who farted. Right. Well, someone probably farted. He was on the case. Yeah. It was probably Geiger. Yeah, it definitely was me. I wonder if he was trying to be funny or if he was like really worried about people's digestive health maybe (laughs) it's like that yeah that's the the pooping equivalent of like a pink ribbon you know where you're supposed to go get a mammogram or whatever he's like (laughs) i want to know who farted maybe you should go get a colonoscopy or something just a whole parade of people wearing who farted shirts (laughs) my dad used to have lots of hats um especially back in the 80s they had like the that then came back in style like the trucker hat with the big foam front you know sure yeah and uh my dad's best friend jerry i think i've mentioned him before kind of the crazy dentist guy i remember he had one that like there was a foam thing of like a horse's ass actually sticking out like the the like a half it was just the butt sticking out from the hat and the feet Uh were planted on the brim and it was taking a shit i don't know what it said on the hat (laughs) I just as a kid, from, and, I, and like the thing is, he you know he didn't live in our house, obviously. So like he came over wearing it, so he wore it out, like outside of his uh, outside of his home. Mm-hmm. What's the occasion for that hat? Uh, if you're going to like a rodeo or mm-hmm. a horse <laughs> shitting party, if you want to know which horse shat. Yeah, uh-huh. uh... yeah. And then my dad wore a hat that said "Who farted?" <laughs> it was pointing right at the hat. <laughs> My dad at my wedding just standing solemnly with a who farted hat on. <laughs> on the back of his tux, it says party naked. At least it wasn't like uh, who farted booty shorts that he was wearing or something like that. Right. That would have been a little. I I had a shirt. Uh, we might cut this out, but I had a shirt with, <laughs> nope. um, no. with two dinosaurs on it. And underneath it, it said never forget. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really funny. I, I yeah, that shirt. very funny shirt, which I did not realize the date and wore it on the 10th anniversary of 9-11 to work. Uh, oh, Because <laughs> I just didn't remember what the date was. Mm-hmm. And like one of my coworkers was like, uh, do you know what today is? And I was like, oh, fuck. So I had to wear the shirt inside out the rest of the day. <laughs> Shit, does anyone have an extra shirt? Some guy just happened to have a who farted shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody heard... had one with like a dinosaur taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Did you then wear that same shirt to the opening of Jurassic Park 4? No. No. That would have been much more apropos. Then. I wore I wore my mm. who farted shirt to the opening <laughs> of Jurassic Park 4. <laughs> it was the Raptor. The raptor fire. I remember I was end. at a gas station and this old fat guy came in, the, the big beer gut, and he was wearing a t shirt with an arrow pointing down that said, This isn't a beer gut, it's a fuel tank for the sex machine. And I could not stop laughing. Like the juxtaposition of this old dude's jowly ass face mm-hmm. and him with a, a fuel tank for fucking 
was pretty. <laughs> so what happened when you fucked him? Was he good? He had he had energy for days. He was like <laughs> like I literally watched his belly shrink until it was nothing. He used up all the fuel. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're eating Tim Tams, and Chad, you got some Tim Tam news to share. I do. I I just stumbled across this uh, fairly recent news story about Tim Tams. This is from uh, February sixteenth of this year. Uh, from news.com.au. So here's the article. Arnott's, that's the company that makes Tim Tams, Arnott's releases limited edition products on National Tim Tam Day. First of all, did you guys know there was a National Tim Tam Day? No, when no. was it? Uh, I should have come prepared with that In knowledge. the States? No, this is uh, in Australia. February mm. 16th okay. was uh, National Tim Tam Day. We did not celebrate. Um, so here's what it says. Just how much do you love Tim Tams? For example, every time you go to take a bite and inhale its decadent scent, do you wish you could just bottle it up and spray it all over your body? Well, yes. Yeah. Now you finally can. Ooh, After wow. Arnott's revealed a limited edition range of products to celebrate National Tim Tam Day on February 16th. Oh, it's right here in the article. Uh, that includes a perfume <laughs> that will have you smelling good enough to eat, literally. And so they have a picture of this uh it's just like a little exactly like you'd imagine a perfume bottle with the tim tam logo across and it says eau de parfum it says arnott's has captured the essence of tim tam by releasing the tim tam eau de parfum which is one of three limited edition items shoppers can purchase the 30 milliliter perfume features real cocoa with notes of cocoa and almond so you can immerse yourself in the alluring aroma of a Tim Tam biscuit. Um, and then it says other items include fluffy premium cotton Tim Tam slivers and a Tim Tam mug. So <laughs> they like <laughs> kind of half ass those other two other two products. So before I continue, uh, what do you guys think? Would you would do you want to smell like a Tim Tam? It just nope. smells like chocolate. I mean, yeah. basically, this is like a chocolate perfume i think mm-hmm. uh let me take a whiff let me take a <laughs> open one of these bags and take a whiff i think it smells pretty good i wouldn't I know. mind no, if i, I was leaning in on a lady and uh found that she smelled like a chocolate cookie this guy's over here leaning on ladies so <laughs> you're whispering in a- their ear who farted <laughs> <laughs> who tim tim is slammed <laughs> Your wife's a pretty big snack person, so she might like actually go for that, right? If you smelled like combos or a Tim Tam or Yeah, she likes snacks, but <laughs> she doesn't like to <laughs> smell like them. That's like you told me your wedding night, you just like rubbed funyuns all over your body. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Would you She's guys like, wear that? I wish you smelled like a ginger chew. Um <laughs> Well, no, I mean I'm not a big I, like cologne or perfume kind of guy in general, yeah. you know. Yeah, you didn't even I, wear deodorant for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it would just like smell like shit, honestly. <laughs> um, well, so here's what um, Rebecca Chan, Arnott's spokesperson, said. National Tim Tam Day gives Aussies the chance to celebrate the chocolate biscuit. And they're, quote, so excited to launch the exclusive Tim Tam gift store. So <laughs> here's what she said. 2019 saw us take over Tamworth and rename the town to Tim Tamworth. While in 2020, we gave away free Tim Tam biscuits to Aussies named Tim or Tam. In 2021, we created the luxurious Tim Tam Hotel Suite. So this year, we thought we'd grant wishes through an online gift store that hosts special items our fans have requested for years, including the new perfume. Those are some um, pretty cool publicity stunts, wouldn't you agree? So they gave out Tim Tams to people named Tim. Let's be honest. No one's named Tam. There's <laughs> like not Tamara, a maybe, or something. Yeah, Tammy. Tamara, Tammy. Mm-hmm. Um, T- Tia and Tamara. Oh, wow. That's a deep pull. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's favorite pair, Tia and Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I'm a little jealous of Australia, where here we're celebrating things like Mother's Day. <laughs> and they're celebrating like a Tim Tam Day. Right. <laughs> Way better. <laughs> yeah, when is National Reese's Cup Day? That's what I need to know. <laughs> and can you give free Reese's Cups to everyone named Chad? Why not? <laughs> right. 
Now, Chad, you would definitely wear a Reese's Cup perfume or cologne, hmm. right? That's worse, I think. Yeah. Smelling like peanut butter? I don't think that's a desirable. Yeah, a nice hot day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I would I would be afraid to do that because like I might end up eating my own flesh. You know, if that happened, I just yeah. take a huge bite out of my arm. It could okay. happen. Is there like a candy? <laughs> Like eating a chocolate cookie or Tim Tam before the person eats it before you kiss them. Mm-hmm. Would that be a desire? Before before they lean on you. Right. <laughs> Wait. Do is there one I want them to do or Because there's some things. Like if you taste peanut butter on someone's breath. That's pretty bad. That's not like something you want to taste, right? No. There's, there's something out about that. But a, a chocolate cookie, I think that might be all right. Yeah. Or like are we counting like an Altoid or a peppermint candy? That's good. Yeah, those are basic. Like those are meant for that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like a um, can of sardines. Maybe good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Typical candy can of maybe sardines. Maybe three pieces of salt water taffy, so they be like, as I'm trying to get in there, mm-hmm. <laughs> stretching it out. Yeah, I. You know, I mean, I. I wouldn't be opposed to somebody. Yeah, somebody's breath smelling like a freshly baked chocolate chip cookie. That could be all right. Mm. Brownie. <laughs> Is that how it, when you guys eat food, does it feel, does it taste or smell freshly baked in your mouth? Is that what it, you guys open, <laughs> it's like you open your jaw and it just like wafts out like it's from the oven? Is that what it is? I mean, if I've freshly baked the cookie, yeah. I, I guess. So I, every time I, every time I kiss my wife, first I have to go and bake a batch of cookies, <laughs> take them out of the oven, shove them in her mouth, and then I can give her a kiss. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Let's eat some Tim Tams, <laughs> and then we will uh-huh. make out. Okay. And see how it goes. Hell uh, yeah. We're at yeah. three different Tim Tams. I've been really looking forward to this. Yeah. Uh, we're going to rate them on a five-point scale. A love dat, like dat, indifferent to dat, dislike dat, and hate dat. Let's start with the classic dark, the most basic B of these Tim Tams. Now, Tim Tams, <laughs> if you're not aware, are a rectangular... Uh, cookie that are is mostly chocolate. If you get a regular one, it's pretty much all chocolate. Some chocolate crisp cookie and some chocolate cream together. And this is the dark chocolate variety. And for um, a, a quick history lesson, we did the original Tim Tam in our first year. And I think you guys both gave it a love dat. I gave it a like, and it ended up winning the year. Uh, which which was insane to me because we also did the double coat that year, which to me is the superior Tim Tam was the double coat. But you guys didn't like it as much. It's still very good, but... This doesn't taste super dark. No. Not as dark as if you were, let's say, a Hershey bar, something else that's all chocolate. Uh, when you take a Hers- regular Hershey's versus a dark chocolate one, I think this has less of a difference. I'd be curious to eat this side by side with a, like a regular one, just to see mm-hmm. how different it would be. That's what I was going to say. Like, if you handed this to me and told me it was a regular one, I'd probably believe you. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it tastes dark, but like a lot of times chocolate from other countries besides the U.S. just in general tastes darker than chocolate we have here. Right. All right. Gagger, you're up first. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I mean... Regular Tim Tam is a love that. We all talked about how this tastes just like a regular Tim Tam. And I like dark chocolate, so any hint toward darkness uh, would be fine by me. Um, this has still got like the same consistency, the same like creamy cream in the middle. Yep, that's right. The old creamy cream. Um, I think this is really good. <laughs> I'm giving it another love that. This is uh, tasty as bitch. Wow, Do you think you'd right. like it more than the original or no? Or like I said, it's... Try? Kind of hard, yeah. It's kind of hard to recall. I am I the only time I feel like it's darker. This is going to sound a little weird, but like it's after the fact. Like now that yeah. the cookie is just kind of sitting in my mouth and I'm kind of like sucking it out of my teeth, it yep. tastes darker. That's not uh, weird. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, but I like the taste and I like dark chocolate. So yeah, I, I don't know if I like it better. I, I and that's just out of deference to how good that regular one is, but it's still very good. Jen. Um, yeah, this, this is really good. It's, it's definitely not as good as the, the original flavor no. uh, to me. And the, the aftertaste is a big part of that, but even, even the during taste is just, uh, is a step down 
it's it like I said, it is similar, but it is noticeable in that it's worse. Um, it's still a very good cookie. I, I could eat a whole box of these actually and not complain, which is not something I would normally say about a, a dark chocolate product. Uh, for me, it's just barely into the like that territory, but it is still like that. It's good. Uh, well, you're not going to cost it the basket of puppies this time because I agree with you. Um, it's it's probably hurt by the comparison a little, but that comparison's there. And like Geiger mentioned, there's that taste at the end, uh, which just isn't as good as the regular Tim Tim. Um, so I'm also going to give it a like that. Two likes and a love. Really strong start. Um but we've got some tough competitors coming up. Let's do the uh, mint next. Great score for such a basic B. Yeah. <laughs> I have been looking forward to these mint ones since I got them. I would have left I would have left the mint to last if it was a two man, two nick podcast. Yes. Because <laughs> I think it could have brought home a great score, but I feel like um it, it's gonna be hurt by Chad's potential rating. Right. This well, is the I'll- one I've been looking forward to the most. Yes, I, I, I will say this. Geiger sent me two of these and um, my wife stole one when I was trying to come downstairs. She's like, you're not taking both of those. And she did tell me that she thinks that um, I'm not going to hate these as much as I was expecting. It smells fantastic. It does smell pretty minty. So same cookie looks the same in the middle. It actually looks even darker in color than the dark chocolate one did. But same setup with the cream on the inside. And the whole thing smells minty. It's almost, it's got a mint taste like uh, a thin mint or a frango mint, Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of of mint. So Chad, what do you think? Hmm. Um, Okay, here's what I'll say. The mint flavor is not super strong compared to some other kind of mint candies that we've had. Even like mint M&Ms, I feel like have a much stronger mint flavor to them. But the, the, the mint that is there, kind of, even though this is a dark cookie, it's also dark, like dark mint, the, the mint covers up the dark uh, chocolate flavor that, that I was getting from the last one, right? That sort of like aftertaste that I had that I didn't love was blown out of the water by the mint. And in this case, it's actually a good thing because it's, it's not like a super overwhelming mint. And I actually prefer this flavor of the mint in the aftertaste. Uh, to that that dark chocolate flavor. Still not as good as a regular. Definitely not as good as a double coat. Um, but surprisingly, I'm also going to give this one a like that. I prefer it to the to the dark one that we just ate. I also prefer it to the dark one. Uh, the, the dark one actually is when I was a baseball player as a kid. Or in the dark player. one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there was a guy who, one kid on another team who we were kind of friends with, who could throw like a breaking pitch. He was like the f- first kid to do it at a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was hard to hit because nobody did it. You weren't used to seeing it as a kid and it would break a little. Probably like if I saw it today, it would look barely, but it seemed like it was like a, a two foot break at the time. <laughs> um and the coach on the other t- the his coach would always yell, throw him the dark one, Mike. <laughs> throw him the dark one. That's a really weird way to frame it. It's also, not even tele- a baseball term. Telegraphing the pitch completely. Like, right. then you know what to look for. Yeah, I mean, it's a really showboating. <laughs> <laughs> These pieces of shit can't hit the dark one. <laughs> the, what is the dark one? <laughs> Very strange. Um, so... I think this cookie is outstanding. Now, I love Frango Mints. It reminds me a lot of that, and it does remind me a lot of a uh, Thin Mint, which I don't, which I think is highly overrated. Mm. But where this excels over the Thin Mint is it's a better quality cookie than that, and it's the cream, right? Think of a Thin yeah. Mint with a nice chocolate cream yeah. in the middle. That's what uh, raises this above to me. This is a, a fantastic cookie. I'm going to give it a love, Dad. Mm. So a like, a love. Geiger, what do you think? Well, um, you hit on the head when you said it tastes like a Thin Mint. I thought ex- exactly the same thing immediately as I bit in is a Thin Mint. I think you're right in that it's better because of the cream. And also, I think the chocolate's better. Like the Thin Mint, like 
Girl Scout cookie, the chocolate on the outside isn't as good as this. And they're harder. Like, this is a softer cookie. Um, it, the, co- the chocolate on the outside is better, and it's got the cream. I also love Thin Mints. So this is pretty... I think this is better than a Thin Mint. I think it's better than the one we just had, and I gave the other one a love that. So I am basically wow. the Humane Society. I'm out here giving out baskets of puppies. That's what the Humane <laughs> Society does, right? It is leave baskets of puppies on people's doorstep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, That's, cool. sure. That's what I thought. Uh, two love dads in a row for me. This is fantastic. I wow. love these Tim Tams. That's one episode is, is how many love dads you gave out all of last year. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> surprised, too. All it took was me for me to, to bite into uh, the Donnie Dark one over here. And uh, now I'm <laughs> super into it. So uh, the Mint has put up a nearly unbeatable score, but... All right. Well, there, see you guys. there is a little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I no. said nearly. Oh, oh, OK. We left a little drama because the chewy caramel Tim Tam could slide in the basket of puppies, just like the Humane Society. Uh-huh. And take <laughs> I think that could be a really good one. You know, it could have yeah. maybe some Snickers like qualities to it yeah. or something like good. that. Yeah. All right, Chad, what do we got? We shall see. All right. This segment is about unsolved snacksteries. Oh, boy. Whenever possible, the actual snacks and snacking experts have participated in recreating the events. What you are about to listen to is not a news broadcast. Join me. Perhaps you may be able to solve a snackstery. These are all about killers who kill people with snacks. <laughs> all right so we are returning to unsolved snack stories it's been uh been a little while since we did this so i thought i'd bring it back um so for those of you who don't remember how to play this i.e you two guys um <laughs> here's how it works uh you are both detectives and you must follow the clues to find out which snack has committed a crime so also known to- as who farted <laughs> the crime is who farted you need to figure out which snack it is um so novak you will be playing detective jess snacka fletcher and geiger you will be playing the world's greatest detective the snack man so uh <laughs> snack man <laughs> the snack man <laughs> okay he he's fucking Batman and I'm yeah. Angela Lansbury. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm the snack man. The snack man. <laughs> and yeah. you're Jess Snacka Fletcher. <laughs> Angela Snackberry. Um Okay, so <laughs> so the way this works is I will give uh, for each crime, I will give you three pre clues. And <laughs> what you have to do is take these pre-clues and find out from those pre-clues, each of those pre-clues points to an actual clue. Stop saying pre-clue. <laughs> <laughs> you get a point for solving the pre-clue and finding out the clue. Then when you have all three clues, you can put those together to find out the actual snack. And if you guess the snack correctly, you get three points. If not, the other person has a chance to steal for two points. So, I'll give you an example, and Don't then it'll be that. totally clear. <laughs> 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 All right. So, for an example, first pre clue a famous person who cooks. And the answer chef. to that, celebrity chef. That's right. Mm-hmm. Second pre clue a celebration of another trip around the sun. Birthday. The clue there, a birthday. That's right. Oh, and the boy. third one, yeah, the sound when a boot crushes a snail. And of course, the clue there being crunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have celebrity chef, birthday, and crunch, the snack. The Robert Irvine birthday cake fit crunch bar. <laughs> that famous sound, stepping on a snail. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you're the yeah. detectives. You got to solve the preclues. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Right. Um, so let's see. How are we going to decide who goes first here? Hmm. Ladies first. Oh, right. Jessica, yeah. just snack a Fletcher. Okay, here we yeah. go. <laughs> go I ahead. Like, well, I was like, wait, which one? Go ahead. What a gentleman's. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman, a gentleman. Uh, okay, here are your first set of preclues. Just to answer after each preclue what you think uh, the clue is. All right, here we go. First preclue. What the early bird gets? Worm. 
That's right. Second pre-clue. What's opposite of blue on the color wheel? Fucking color wheel. Mm. I'm going more in the snack we <laughs> to orange. <laughs> and the third, that's correct. The third pre-clue takes three of these to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Licks. Mm. There you go. No. Now the exact name of that orange lollipop with the worm inside. Mm -hmm. I have to figure. I have to say the exact name, or do I just have to know uh, that that's what it was? No, I think that's good enough. No, uh, we didn't get it. <laughs> 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 it was the uh, Hot Licks Orange Worm Sucker. That's uh, that was that was the name mm -hmm. of it. So, all right, great. Six points there for Jess. Now I did not know the color wheel. I just knew the sucker we ate was orange. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up the snack man. Yes. First preclue. City known for dropping tea bags. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, <laughs> snack man. <laughs> Boston. That's right. All right, second preclue. What kidneys and the color black have in common? Beans. That's right. And third yeah. one. Pink Floyd is just another blank in the blank. Brick in the wall, but I don't know what that has to do. Oh. <laughs> uh, That's right. Uh, the Riddler has fallen on hard times. Like I said, this is the worst. <laughs> riddle. Uh, the Boston Baked Beans. That's right. The Boston Baked Beans. They had like a Six. brick wall on the package. Oh, I'm like, mm -hmm. what did that? I thought you were trying to talk about Pink Floyd, like getting baked. It's like, like I, it was like a pot. <laughs> <laughs> Are they famous for? Probably. I'm I guess. assuming yeah, it had much, to be on yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to be pretty baked to do that whole Wizard of Oz thing. Yeah. Um, all right. Here we go. There's, there's eight of these total. So here we go. This is uh, crime number three. Back to you, Jess Naka Fletcher. Here we go. First mm -hmm. preclue. Jack o' lantern colon origins. Pumpkin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Number two. The correct name for soda. You already said the correct you name. Think, yeah. So <laughs> you you're thinking pop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and uh, third pre clue. Kitchen appliance that is used to put Jesus on bread. What? <laughs> Should I know this? Do you know this, Geiger? I think so. Kitchen appliance sure. used to put Jesus on bread. <laughs> I'm going to kick myself for not knowing Gotta follow this. the pre-clues. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's so, important. hang on. Pumpkin pop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know this. You do? Yeah. Shit. Pumpkin pop. Oh, this is going to hurt me. I don't think I know it. Mm. What is it? Do you you want to take a guess? Well, he can not be able to steal. Do you want to take a guess? Oh. Um, and Jesus on bread. <laughs> <laughs> can we just pause right. for a second how Chad called this the third crime? What what crime is <laughs> How is this in any way crime related? I mean, it was kind of a crime that we had to eat these things, if you think about it. <laughs> Uh, so Geiger, do you want to, do you want to, yeah, for two ahead, points, Geiger, you want to yeah, so I think the third pre-clue is mm -hmm. toaster because yeah. people set, take the bread out of the toaster and say Jesus face is in it. So that That's is right. the pumpkin pie or pumpkin uh, pop tart that we had. That's right. right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two points for Novak there, but also two points for Geiger for the steal. I, I was not about to get that. <clears throat> All right. Moving on. The next crime. Yeah. First pre-clue. Mm -hmm. Bee vomit. Oh boy, I'm in trouble. Bee vomit? Mm -hmm. uh, didn't you just say what the clue is? There's a word for that? Is that what you're saying? Mm hmm. Pollen? I don't know. Fly vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Not pollen. All right, All right. second pre clue. The Stay Puffed Man's Constitution. Marshmallow? Mm hmm. Third mm -hmm. pre clue. The object of the question in the Night at the Roxbury song's lyrics. Hold on. It's a bit of a maze to get to that one. Yeah. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> the object of the question in the Night at the Roxbury song's lyrics. So that baby don't hurt me. Mm -hmm. What is love? 
So baby. <laughs> What's the object of the question? Maybe I don't do English right. I... <laughs> <laughs> Love. Yeah, there you okay. go. You got that. Okay, so you got two of the two of the so marshmallow clues. love. So <laughs> go marshmallow, marshmallow love. love. Hold on, let me. Sorry, hold. I gotta go back to the back cave. Alfred, <laughs> plug the into the back computer. Love marshmallow. <laughs> be puke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me, sir. Have you been hitting the head? Um. Mm. Oh wait, is be be puke is honey, isn't it? So yeah. yes. Okay. That's the only chance I had to steal something. Honey marshmallow baby? Honey bit of honey? No, that's not right. We didn't eat that. I have no fucking We idea. did eat the bit of honey, but it's not the bit that's of honey. I don't, no I don't know. No, like, if you know the snack. Honey right? marshmallow love. Yeah, I don't No, I don't know. It was the uh Love of Honey S'mores cookies that we ate. Do you remember those? I big still don't know what that s'mores is. S'mores cookies? It was like a big <laughs> David sent it to us. It yeah, was yeah, I remember, but gold. I didn't remember that was a name. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We eat a lot of shit on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two more points for Gaga there. Okay, back to you, Jess Naka Fletcher. We're halfway home. First pre clue Pigs gag at a luau. Ah. Apple. Mm hmm. Second one The alternative to gas or ass. An alternative to gas <laughs> or ass. I know this. Uh, grass? Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> you got to give them one of those things. Yeah. Or, or it's bee puke, I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. Third pre clue. Best holiday of the year for Reese's fans. <laughs> Halloween. Mm, no. No. That's not right. Oh. Um,. Not for true Reese's fans, anyways. Yeah, for sure. Like, get the most saying. Reese's. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so you got two. That you want to guess a clue? What or was the? What were the crime. two I got? You got an apple and grass. Oh, the uh, apple flavored Easter grass. Mm-hmm. Sour apple edible grass. Yeah, yeah. Easter is the best holiday because for, um, because of uh, the the eggs, the Cadbury style eggs. Mm-hmm. are only out then um all right so that's five points there for you nicely done moving on to the next one back to you the snack man yes here are the pre-clues for the next crime where are the drugs <laughs> <laughs> snack to me um okay so <laughs> first one malcolm jamal warner's most famous role he was theo uh, mm-hmm. uh, theo huxtable that's right theo second pre-clue <laughs> I don't know if you're, this one's gonna make sense. What you would pop if you were singing "Zoot Suit Riot"? Zoot Suit Riot. Throw back a bottle of beer. Zoot Suit Riot. Mm-hmm. What I would pop? Like the pop. cap off the beer? Hmm. No. What the? F- My hips <laughs> from dancing? I don't. What the? All right. Third pre clue. Sometimes you feel like this. Sometimes you don't. Like a nut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Theo and nuts and ska music. Uh, <laughs> sure. Is that from the lyric in that song? What no. I pop? Oh. No. It's probably more obscure than that. <laughs> oh, oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the subject of the song in the pop <laughs> in the BQ. Uh, all right. So I, I know have... that one. That clue. You know this one? No, I know the clue oh. that you missed. Theo and Nut? Mm. Theo. Did Theo ever nut on the Cosby show? <laughs> the episode? Uh, <laughs> is there an episode where he learned about masturbation? <laughs> where Bill catches, or, or uh, Cliff catches. Have you been nutting, nutting in the pudding pops again? <laughs> <laughs> when Bill when Bill Cosby <laughs> caught Malcolm Jamal Warner nutting to uh, Zoot Suit Riot in his trailer. <laughs> We are putting this on to the episode. <laughs> it's an important lesson for the kids. Uh, I told I you, Bill, I don't care. It is going on the air. <laughs> uh, all right. I, uh, uh, Theo's come. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably right. not it. I'm guessing. Novak, you want to try for the steal? Well, the other clue is cherry, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wait, so cherry why would you? 
the oh. Cherry Poppin' Daddies. That's the I band. I thought about how bad that name was. Um, it's that's awful. pretty terrible. That's it's really, really bad. bad. <laughs> uh, uh, the Cherry... The Theo Bar. Mm-hmm. The like oh. cherry-flavored Theo Bar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, this, it was Theo Cherry Almond was the one. So that's two points for each of you because Geiger got two of the pre clues and you got the steal. All right, two two left. Here we go. Back to you, Jess Naka Fletcher. First pre clue: Violet Beauregard's weakness. Um, Violet was she the chewing gum one? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. All right, second preclude. What the Beastie Boys will make the beat do? Drop. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be mm, drop? Drop. <laughs> Angela Lansbury. I believe it will drop. <laughs> uh, I don't have an Angela Lansbury impersonation. So you should have made me the Cosby Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> the Cosby Mysteries. That's a much different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a show called that? <laughs> was, what? The Cosby Mysteries. Uh, was he it really? A detective. The mm. Cosby Mysteries. Yeah, it is. It is a show. Wait, he just went by his actual actor name, Bill Cosby. There was no, no, no. He played a guy named Guy Hanks. <laughs> Wouldn't it be the Hanks Mysteries then? <laughs> Wow. And there was one season with uh, 19 episodes. It also had most deaf in it. Oh, wow. When was this? Uh, 19, 1990. Recently. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> they let him out of jail in the 70s. <laughs> to make a show. <laughs> he just got out of prison. I got a new deal. <laughs> uh, in the mid 90s. It was 94. Wow. It says. Yeah. Yeah, Novak, um, I, you could definitely be Bill Cosby if you want. I have no. It was idea. like a, uh, All right. <laughs> it was like a Blair Witch thing, and he's just like, "We're gonna go in the room and see if most Jeff is nutting." <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can be Guy Snacks instead of just Snack of Fletcher. Okay. If you want Guy um, Snacks? <laughs> you really did a lot of work on that one. <laughs> you could be Snack Snacksley. Uh, uh, Angela where, Lansbury did what else? She was the like uh, teapot or something. Wasn't she was the she? teapot in Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She uh, uh, was she in Magic Mike? <laughs> yes. <laughs> was she the one of the female strippers? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, she played most deaf in the Cosby Mysteries. <laughs> 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 okay, so that was good uh, casting. Lady Hanks. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, third. Uh, okay, third preclue. Marianus is the most famous version of this. <laughs> Trench. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what were the first? What were my so first you clues? you had a gum drop and trench. Trench. There was definitely a a gum drop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's... Was that the trenches gum job? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a fucking clue. That <laughs> clue one. All right, guys. Three pre clues, can... but not a real. I was gonna say, do you have any pre clues for it? So, mm-hmm. gum drop trench. Yeah. Do you think you can steal here? <laughs> nope. I mean, I think like a gumdrop. I know what a gumdrop is, and I know we mm-hmm. ate one probably at some point. But there was a trench involved. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we ate uh, the juicy drop gum, oh. which, which had that trench in the middle that you you pour the gel into. Oh, it had a, a trench in. The- that's a real fucking stretch. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. All right. So quick score check here. No, uh, with the last one to go, Novak has 18 points. Geiger, you have 12. So, if so you can get all three pre-clues okay. and solve the crime, then it's a tie and we go to the tiebreaker. Great. Well, you here's a get all trench three. question. Mm-hmm. I most deaf will not do this. <laughs> 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 all right, here we go. Here we go. Final crime. Yeah. Let's see how you do. First pre-clue. Where to find the treasure of someone who wants to summon their demon fly girls? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, wait, is this the leprechaun guy? Yeah. So, lep, I guess a pot of gold? Where do you find the treasure? That pot the of gold. The end of the rainbow? Mm-hmm, rainbow, okay, yeah. Rainbow. 
Okay, great. Second prequel. That <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> fucking map to the stars for that fucking thing. Second prequel. Uh-huh. Pinky's boss. Malcolm and Jamal Warner. No, uh, that would be the brain. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Third one. Letter of the alphabet with curves in all the right places. There's a fucking wow. ton of letters with curves in it. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I... Uh, is, it's S, I assume, is what you're talking mm-hmm. about? Okay. Nice. Rainbow yeah, S. Sexy. Rainbow S and what was the middle one? Brain. Brain. Okay. What? I, look, I have one shot at this. Mm-hmm. I can think of one thing that was sort of S-shaped. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't think of a snack that was shaped like an S. L. Then what the fuck am I supposed to think? Of? <laughs> Any snack that had the letter S in it. No, I narrowed it down. Mm. Uh, because the only thing I can think of when we say rainbow, mm-hmm. but it makes no sense with brain, mm-hmm. is that rainbow marshmallow rope thing we ate and that was horrible but that can't be what it it did it look yeah like that it? doesn't seem like it has anything to do with brain i agree yeah well <laughs> okay i'm gonna say that one because that's all i can mm-hmm. think of yeah. okay okay, okay. Right. novak do you want to steal see if you can steal just i'd like fun. to but i don't have a fucking <laughs> idea what are you talking about all right, so the uh, the the snack that committed this crime is the Skittles zombies. Skittles zombies. Uh, so my zombies. clue was that S. Skittles Light started with S. S. Yeah, that's they have totally... an S. On no, every they have one an S them. on the snack, printed on them, and uh, brains. Zombies like brains. You know, I get mm-hmm. that part. <laughs> uh, all right, well, good job, Nova. Taste the rainbow. All right, we have a winner, and that winner is Guy Snacks. Well done. Good Guy job, Snacks. Bill Cosby. Yeah, I shouldn't have changed to that, should I? <laughs> no, you should go back. All right, congratulations, Jess Snack of All right, yeah. it, to make you feel better, I'll be Jeffrey Epstein next time. <laughs> no? Should I not do that? I'll be Harvey Snacks, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> I'll be uh, Louis C.K. Snack. Why did you just say Louis Snack K? <laughs> I didn't think of it in time. <laughs> it was way too hard. Tale as old as time. <laughs> Beauty and Theo's nut. <laughs> that makes no fucking sense. All right. Great. That was Unsolved Snack Stories. Let's go to the nice work. Um, Chewy Caramel Tim Tim. This is actually the one... I felt like I was least able to sort of predict what this is going to be like. Right. Could be anything. Yeah. I mean, a dark chocolate one, you can tell. Yeah. You're getting pretty much the same thing. And then the mint. But this one. This is the only regular chocolate caramel. one. Yeah. Yeah. This is not dark. Yeah. Not just any caramel. It specifically has the word chewy in it. The caramel has a very Twix-like pull to it. There's not a ton of caramel in there. No. It's so no. sort of a, a very thin layer. It does make me feel like I nailed the dark rating because I do really like this uh, milk chocolate outside. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the caramel isn't bad, but I don't know. I was expecting something a little bit better. Hmm. I'm not sure how it could be. I'm not sure how this could be done better. Maybe just not have any caramel and then it'd be done yeah. better. <laughs> Some <laughs> just nougat, be a regular Tim Tam. Nougat and peanuts in it. <laughs> and then it would be a Snickers bar. <laughs> oh, I do I like this milk chocolate on the outside. It's really hard to rate it. And I'm I'm, I'm I definitely don't love it. And I'm actually torn between an indifferent and a like. Really? I just I don't think the caramel has that much of a caramel taste to it. I think it needs a stronger caramel flavor. If you're going to go caramel, then you got to go all the way, right? If you're going to get a graphic tea, don't just get like a, you know, something that just has a sports team name or something. Yeah. You go all the way. You want someone to read your shirt, mm-hmm. you ask who farted, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> mm-hmm. If you, you go want to get attention, yeah, right. you, you could get a uh, Theo Nutted shirt. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah, those are all the rage. <laughs> there was this one my 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 dad's friend had this hat. It was like a foam hat, and it had Theo's dick sticking out, <laughs> nodding all over the brim. Theo's <laughs> dick. <laughs> Pretty weird. I recognize that dick, dick anyway. It was a Theo's dick. So you knew Look, what it was. Guys, that dick is all over r slash celebrity penis. Okay, so you can see <laughs> that all you want. <laughs> it's frequent reoccurrence there. Yeah, those hats. I think I had a hat. I definitely seen hats with stuff sticking out. Sometimes it's like yeah. boobs or something, um, <laughs> or a lot of times you get them from Disney World. Then they have like there's a giant yeah. Donald Duck bill or something. Yeah, um, and they're never comfortable. There's always like, like too much shit on them. <laughs> or do you get that? Did you get that one at Disney World where there's a giant Mickey Mouse cock nutting all over the brim? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There was. I had one that was like a bear head on top. And then sticking out of the bear's mouth was Theo's cock. Uh, no, but I did What's have the that bear one. about? Yeah, I know the bear ripped his cock. I don't know. It was a whole narrative. I didn't get it. Mm. Yeah. I, I wow. turned that episode off once they walked in on Theo. <laughs> it was very dark. I didn't understand <laughs> at all what the point was. The Revenant was a remake of that season six, <laughs> episode 10 of the Cosby show. <laughs> Theo Cosby fighting off a bear. <laughs> <laughs> you killed my son, and I went halfway across the Arctic. Or whatever happened. <laughs> Good. That was the IMD pot synopsis, I think. <laughs> you killed my son! <laughs> you ripped his dick clean off. <laughs> No more nothing. My, my, I don't mind. Does my impression sounds nothing like Cosby? By the way, I wonder, that was Cosby talking. I, yeah. I, I feel like I should make that clear. Yeah. Mine's right on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I took another bite. And I'm a little disappointed. Uh, the caramel is not good. I think it's a miss a misplay here. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give this an indifferent to that. And that's going to pretty much wipe it out of a chance to win. But let's see uh, what score it gets. Geiger? Yeah, I mean, it's not. It, it's the worst Tim Tam I've eaten. But it still doesn't make it a bad cookie, I don't think. The caramel just seems like an afterthought, like it's barely there. Now, I don't love super chewy caramel where it gets all clogged up in your orifice. Uh, what? Also knows your teeth. Yeah, I don't know why it said orifice, but it's like clogging in your throat. I jammed this up my nose and in, into my asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. I, Put kinda... the caramel into your butt. Yes. Yes, I did. Because <laughs> you wanted to. You wanted to fart out the uh, tam perfume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who caramel is, is my hat? <laughs> <laughs> Who farted Tim Tam perfume? Uh, probably that guy shoving Tim Tams up his ass. Probably him. <laughs> <laughs> the guy over there with the horse shitting on his hat and the party naked t-shirt. Um, yeah, I, I think it's fine. I don't I, I don't like the caramel that much. I, it's And like I said, it, it's hard to blame it for the caramel too much because it's almost not there. You barely taste it. It doesn't really impact the cookie at all. It's almost like eating a regular Tim Tam. So, but but the little bit of the caramel that is there kind of brings it down. So, having said all that, I'd still probably give it a like that. It's a fine enough cookie, and the chocolate around the outside of it is so good that, like, I don't mind the, the caramel part. So, I, I give it a solid like that. But it's not of all the Tim Tams that I have jammed into my orifice. This is the one mm-hmm. I'd least likely do so again. I think it's that guy with a 26-pound hat with a bear and a dick in its mouth. And... <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to hold his neck straight. <laughs> and he's wearing nothing but a sandwich board that says The Revenant is a remake of a Cosby <laughs> Show episode. <laughs> There's like a VCR up there. There's all kinds of shit just dangling from his head. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Um, I'm going to disagree with you guys. Uh, this is my favorite one that we've eaten today. Really? Um, I, I like it better than both the other ones. It's still not as good as a regular Tim Tam. Uh, def not as good as a double coat. The caramel most is def. not. A, yeah. Most def not as good as a double coat. <laughs> the, um, the <laughs> most Lansbury. Most def not as good as a double coat. <laughs> Spot on. It's got so much better. Why do you sing that? 
<laughs> no, <I'm done. laughs> Remember when the Cosby show turned into like a Broadway musical? <laughs> and the jello put it pops like that. Um, so <laughs> yeah. that, remember so, on the Cosby show where he constantly talked about jello pudding pots <laughs> for some free <laughs> advertising. Um, these are, uh, they're, they're, they're good. They're a good cookie. They remind me sort of a lot of like a, a Twix in, in, in a way, um, like with that crunch mixed with that caramel. Um, so I, I think they're pretty good. I, I don't think they're amazing. Like, you know. There's there's no reason to get these over a regular Tim Tam, like I said, uh, but they're still gonna get a like that for me. It's it's a solid uh, solid cookie, I think. All right, two likes, and different, and the winner today, despite uh, Chad's dislike for mint, is the dark mint Tim Tam. Mm, hey. uh, we all liked it. Two loves and a like. Super strong episode overall. Yeah. Uh, nothing yeah. but positive things to say about. These Tim Tams. If you haven't tried Tim Tams before and you haven't heard us talk about them, we highly recommend seeking them out. You gotta try Tim Tams. Geiger, where can listeners contact us? Was that supposed to be Cosby again? or <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that was uh, Seinfeld. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> our nuts. This was got his Malcolm Jamal Warner's our nut. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we go the whole episode without making an R nut joke. I know that's I'm pretty impressed with ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. If you like Angela Lansbury, if you uh, if you ever wore a weird graphic tee, if you were a big fan of like a No Fear T shirt or something, where where you inform the world that second place is the first loser while you're waddling around at 300 pounds, Uh, if you had any weird graphic hats with like horses taking dumps or popular tv show fixtures jacking off uh if you no, yeah that's probably we shouldn't say that uh if you uh like tim tams and if or if you haven't had one please let us know what you think of tim tams if there's another tim tam flavor lurking out there that's even better or i guess i should say variety too when you factor in the the double coat we would love to try them so uh, turn us on to those um, and in general, just uh, if you have any questions for the mailbag, thoughts about our snack ratings, suggestions for new snacks, you can reach out to us at you tried that at gmail.com. We are on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook with the you tried that group. We are on um, Twitter. Hashtag you tried that. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, let your friends and family know about it. Uh, give us a re- rating review or some stars or whatever you want to do. Uh, we really appreciate you listening, and uh, we're just going to keep fucking doing it. You know, I I kind of said before, like, and I think this is just a factor of, of peanut butter not being that big outside the United States, but the peanut butter Tim Tam is a huge missed opportunity here, I think. Right. Like, that would be a slam dunk amazing flavor, right. I feel like. They probably instead have, like, a Marmite one or something. Mm, probably. Right. Terrible. All right, so the Cosby Mysteries uh, aired for two seasons. <laughs> In 19 total episodes. <laughs> All right. Um, mm-hmm. They have some <laughs> very brief one sentence synopsis of these episodes. Great. Um, and one, the second episode is acquaintances of a murder victim all die after Bill Cosby questions them. <laughs> <laughs> it says Bill Cosby? It says guy, it says parentheses, it says guy, parentheses, Bill Cosby. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got to hey, cut Bill. Your throat. <laughs> yes? Oh, shit, I'm supposed to be guy. Uh, <laughs> just keep the cameras rolling. So this wasn't like a, this was like a, like a more serious show. This was, you know, if people are dying, this wasn't like... Uh, more of like a kid show, like the mysteries are who stole the lollipops or whatever. It's like people die. It's like a Law and Order caliber show or something. Episode seven: Investigating a boy's death. Guy learns he was killed by a plane with a friend's handgun. So I'm not sure where the comedy would fit Yikes. into that particular. And this yeah. was in the late '90s, like after the Cosby Show. This is bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I watched some of those Cosby mysteries on court TV later. Uh, or that might have been a different series. Never mind. What? <laughs> I'm referring to his real life 
Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, season two, episode five <laughs> is called Big Brother is Watching. Oh, boy. And it says, guys in charge, guys charge in a Big Brother program thinks he witnessed a murder with guests Dan Aykroyd, Regis, and Kathy Lee. <laughs> Regis? Wow. <laughs> hey, Bill, I think I saw a guy get killed over there. You're not supposed to call my bill, Rage. <laughs> How is this? I don't get like yeah. This sounds fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd walks in. He's like, "All right, who's going to be the ghost?" <laughs> <laughs> is this is Bill Cosby like ex- finding the most gruesome like. <laughs> He was found with a pipe shoved up his asshole. <laughs> it was sodomy. It was sodomy. No other case of sodomy. His belly was sliced open and he was hung with his own intestines. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <Naked>. Christ. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds fucked up. Was he trying to get away from his like image? Like, Was he trying to be the first Liam Neeson or something where he had the, you know old guy action hero kind of deal? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is Cosby's taken. <laughs> I've got a particular set of skills. <laughs> what? i got a particular set of pudding pops. <laughs> They've been taken. This is like the rookie cap throwing up and Hasby- Cosby's just eating a hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> Putting chips in his hoagie carefully while he's eating it. <laughs> First day on the force, huh? <laughs> Bring me some more mustard, Regis. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that guy, Cosby? He had his balls cut off. <laughs> <laughs> the pipe was so far up his ass it was sticking out his mouth, Bill. <laughs> Everyone's just calling him Cosby. <laughs> hey, Cosby! <laughs> Gilman, bring me some more mustard. <laughs> was that his, wasn't that his friend Gilman? <laughs> yeah. or something? That was like the producer. <laughs> oh, <okay. Yeah. laughs> you know what? Just fuck it. Call me Bill. It's... <laughs> no one can get it right. <laughs> uh, all right, we're gonna have to. Look. I'm gonna have to watch a few episodes of this. You I'm are. Not... Uh, yeah, you have to. <laughs> yes, because I want to. I want to see a known criminal solve mysteries. <laughs> Isn't that the plot of Dexter? The st- <laughs> <laughs> Cosby was the original Dexter. <laughs> the original Dexter. This is- <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there was a real creepy dude here. Wonder who it was just looking around. <laughs> we'll never find him. <laughs> oh, this murder victim has mustard stains all over their shirt. It wasn't me. <laughs> Something like that. I think our Cosby impressions are merging with our Regis <laughs> Hey, pudding pops! <laughs> this guy was found with the hoagie shoved into his anus. I don't know who it could have been. <laughs> what is was all of the crimes on the Cosby murders <laughs> sodomy? Was it all the yeah. repeated sodomization? Hoagie sodomy. <laughs> his, his belly was sliced open so they could get the hoagie out of his stomach. <laughs> They're still pulling the pastrami out of his butthole. <laughs> That's just the whole intro. Like The uh, cold open is just... Cassie walk into a crime scene and they're well, let me guess sodomy <laughs> yeah. walking to get another deli let me get I put it all together already it was the, it's the hoagie sodomizer isn't it <laughs> it puts on shades and then the theme music hits <laughs> <laughs> most have come over here <laughs> uh, uh. all right <laughs> That'll do it for this week. We'll be back next week to try out three brand new snacks. Yes. Yep. Do I look okay in this? I mean, I'm not offensive looking. Offense? No, because I'm walking down the street, and the next thing I know, people are diving to the ground, and then a guy comes up and claims that some people were shooting at me, and I thought it was a car backfiring. What? Well, just...
Mr. Hanks, as an experienced criminalist, you really ought to know the difference between backfire and a gunshot. Yeah, if you're paying attention. But, but I mean, how do I look in this? 